Hey guys, so today I'm going to be showing you how to make this corn dog design, which was designed by me. So here is the design, and as you can see, it's like a pun. It's supposed to look like a corn dog, but it's also a dog. Yeah, I don't know why I made this. Well, I do. Um, basically, I was looking through some of my old polymer clay designs, and I found this, but made out of polymer clay. So once I saw that, I was like, oh my god, it would look so cute as a loom design. So I made it as a loom design, and yeah. I decided to make a tutorial for it because it's a really simple design, so I know this was like a tutorial I could do that was going to be pretty fast and stuff, so I was like, you know what, I'll make it, just in case anyone else wants to make a corn dog. Even though it's kind of like an awful pun, I'm not the biggest fan of puns, but I thought it was still a cute design, so <laughs> yeah, so we're going to be making a tutorial for this guy today. Um, like I said, he's not hard at all, he's pretty easy, I think he's one of my easier designs, and yeah. I think they're pretty cute. It's just so funny because it's a pun. I said on Instagram that I feel like it's kind of like a dumber design just because like it's a corn dog, like haha, funny kind of thing. And by when I said dumb, I didn't mean like like the mean kind of way of dumb. I just kind of meant like the funny dumb kind of dumb. But yeah, it's still kind of fun. So like I said, making a tutorial. And yeah, um, the only thing is this color I use because I know I'm going to get questions about it. Um, it is an off-brand band color. I, I, my friend bought me some off-brand bands for my birthday and I've just been using them randomly. This is one of those colors, so I have no idea what color this is. But I think, like, um, caramel rain balloon bands would look really good as, with this. Today I'm gonna be using these tan ones just because I'm completely out of caramel bands. So, yeah. But you can use whatever color you want for your corn dog. And, yeah, I'm trying to think of anything else to say. As always, the pattern will be in the description as long as as well as the band count and everything. Um, yeah, I feel like I'm forgetting something, but I don't know what because I think that's all I wanted to say on these guys. So yeah, I'm gonna show you how to make some corn dogs. Anyways, I guess we'll get started. So, of course, you're gonna need a hook. Today I'll be using my double-ended hook. Um, I just really like this hook. It's just my favorite hook. But we only need one end, so you can use a crochet hook, a rainbow loom hook, whatever you have and whatever you want. Um, you're going to need a C-clip or something just to mark your rows with. Uh, I always use a C-clip, but you can use a stitch marker or, you know, paper clip, whatever. And like I already showed you, I'm going to be using these tan bands today. Um, you probably do want a little bit of a darker color, but this was the best I can do. Because I'm running out of some of my colors. And then I'm going to be making my corn dog have mustard today, so I'll just be using some yellow bands. But on this guy, he's supposed to have ketchup. And... Yeah, he's supposed to have mustard, so I'm going to be doing another one like this today. And yeah, of course you're going to need some stuff for the face. Um, I use just one black band for the nose, um, some eyes, so you're just going to want to get all that. Also, just a color for the stick. I don't know what color I'm going to make the stick, I just realized, because last time I used this color for the stick. Hmm. Okay, i got to figure that out, but yeah. So like I said, I think that's it, so we are going to get started. So you're going to want to start with whatever your corn dog color is. So for me, that is this tan color. And I'm just going to pick up some bands. And I know I already said this, but just telling you guys again, the pattern is in the description if you just want to follow that. Okay. So to start... Let me focus. Okay. So to start, we're going to start by wrapping... A band three times around our hook so this is gonna be one two and three and then we're gonna pull a band through everything on our hook both ends back on our hook and then we're gonna push this back loop over the front loop like that and now we're gonna go back in through the cap band and by the way we're putting six stitches in this cap band I forgot to say that um, we're going to go back in through the cap band. We're going to pull a band through just the cap band, so not this last loop. And you should make sure you have all three loops of the cap band up on your hook. So we're going to pull it just through the cap band. Put both ends back on your hook. Push the back loop over the front loop. And then push this loop from last time over. So now we have two stitches in our cap band. Like I said, we want to do six in total. Um, so we're going to need to do four more stitches. So we're just going to do that exact same thing we just did four more times so we have six stitches. So we're going to go back in through our cap band, 
pull the band through just the cap band, push the back loop over the front loop, and then push the loop from last time over. And we're just going to do that three more times. Okay. So once you've done three, um, three more stitches, so you have six loops in total, we're just going to want to count to make sure we have six loops. So you're going to start by counting the one on your hook. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. So once you've made sure you have six loops, instead of going back into the cab band, we're going to go in through this first loop here. And then we're just going to pretty much do the same thing. So we'll pull a band through just a loop. Both ends back on our hook, push the back one over the front one, and then push the loop from last time over as well. And our C-clip will be going on this one. Like that. So that is it for the first part, and I honestly think that's the hardest part of this design. Um, I know a lot of beginners struggle with like the whole cat band bit. Um, but for the next row, we're going to be increasing everything. So if you don't know what that is, I'll show you in a second. But yeah, we're just going to be increasing everything. So basically, what an increase is, is we're just going to be putting two stitches in every loop until we get to the C-clip. So this first loop already has one stitch in it. But because we're increasing, we're going to want to go back in. And we're just going to make another stitch. So Like that. And that's an increase. So we're just going to keep doing that all the way around. So we'll go to the next loop. We'll do one stitch. We'll go back in. Do another stitch. And that's an increase. So we're just going to keep doing that, like I said, all the way around. Just putting two stitches in each loop until we get to the C-clip. And at the end of this row, you should be at 12 loops. almost there. I also repainted my nails the other day as you can see they're ladybugs now and the one that's on my thumb just looks so funny. <laughs> yeah I finally got a chance to repaint my nails though. I was excited. I like having my nails painted but sometimes I kind of ruin them quicker because of all the stuff I do as well as I work so like the cleaner kills the polish but yeah I'm happy my nails are painted again. And once we get to the C-clip, we're just going to make a stitch on the band that has the C-clip on it. So on that loop. Ah. <laughs> Come on. And then once you make the stitch, you're just going to take the C-clip off this one and move it up into the one on your hook. Like that. So like I said, now we should be at 12 loops all the way around. So if we count, we should have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8... 9, 10, 11, 12. So that's it for that row. And now is where it gets really, really repetitive. So we are going to do 10 rows normal. So just 10 rows of single stitches. And at the end of each of the rows, you should still be at 12 loops. I'm going to stay and do a couple rows with you. And then I'm going to go off camera. But yeah, we just need to do 10 rows of single stitches, basically. And it's really repetitive. So... That's why I said this design is really simple, because after we do this, we pretty much close it up and that's it. We just have to attach things. But yeah. So, like I said, I'll stay, do the first few rows with you, and then I'll go off camera and do the rest. So like I said, we're going to do 10 rows of single stitches. So all we're going to be doing is we just do one stitch in each of the loops all the way around until we get to the C-clip. Then, and then at the end of, like I said, you're going to want to make sure you don't accidentally increase. So you're just going to make sure that at the end of the, each of these rows, you're still at 12 loops. But yeah. So we just have to do 10 rows of single stitches. This design is so fun though. Actually, I think it's pretty quick. I mean, it's not too bad. 10 rows is a lot of rows, but it's not very big or like wide, so I think they go pretty quick because we already did one row, like I already finished. So that was one row, and like I said, if I count around, I should still be at 12 loops. Um, I'm not going to count, I'm just going to count at the end, but 
That was one row. So we just have to do 10 rows just like that. I'm going to stay and probably do like three rows with you and then I'll go off camera to do the rest. But yeah. So yeah. We're just going to keep doing rows of single stitches all the way around. So this is the second row. You know, it's funny because I originally painted my nails ladybugs because I was planning on doing the Miraculous Tsum Tsum tutorials next. Because um, I really want to do a tutorial for the queen bee and carapace I made. And then I realized that St. Patrick's Day is coming up and I have a clover design I need to make a tutorial for. And then I was like, oh, I should just make a tutorial for the corn dog then because um, this design is like really quick to make a tutorial for. Because I know the Tsum Tsum ones because there's a lot of like color placement and stuff. They take a little bit longer. But like this one I'm going to be done with in like an hour. Which is really quick for a tutorial because the Tsum Tsum ones usually take me about two. So yeah, I just thought it would give you this tutorial. Because why not? Okay, so that was the second row. Like I said, I'm going to stay to do three rows with you. So I'm going to do one more and then I'm going to go off camera to do the rest. You have to do 10 total. We're on three, so we have seven more. To Wait, no. Yeah, we're on row three. So we still have to do... Wait, I'm confusing myself. No. <laughs> I'm trying not to sound confusing. We just did two rows, so we have to do eight more. This is row three. Yeah. But yeah. Sometimes, though, I was thinking about this, because I'm like, nobody asked for a corn dog design. But I made it and I'm giving it to you. I feel like I sometimes make things like no one asked for and then I just, I just basically do whatever the heck I want at the time. And I feel bad because I know you guys have been asking for like a unicorn has been like the most requested thing for years. And I'm, I never make a unicorn. I make dumb things like corn dogs apparently. <laughs> and I do feel bad because I'm like, you guys like follow me. I know you guys want specific things and I really should listen to you. But then sometimes I'm just like, it's like the afternoon and I'm watching TV with my family and I'm just like, huh, would it be funny if I made a corn dog? And then I make something like this. It's literally what happens. But yeah, I do want to make more requests from you guys. I just, I, I don't know. I just never do it. But yeah. So that was three rows of single stitches. Like I said, we got to do 10 total. So I'm going to go off camera. I'm going to do seven more rows and then I'm going to come back and show you what to do next. Okay, so I just finished the 10 rows and it looks something like this. So yours should be looking something like this. Um, so if you lost count of rows, there's an easy way you can count. It's a little hard, but basically... Well, it's not... It's not I say it's easy and then I say it's hard. Oh my god. But it's not that bad. But you can tell that we increased right here because these two look like they're in the same loop. So after that one, you're just going to find the stitch that's... You can kind of see... It's probably going to be diagonal from it, so you can just go... 1, 2, 3, 4... Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And that's usually how I count. Um, but if you're not sure if you did a, an extra row or one row less, um, it's probably fine. Like, it'll just be slightly shorter or slightly longer. So it's not a big deal if you can't count or you don't know how to count rows and you did an extra row or something. Because this design is very, like, it's not, it's not the biggest deal. So, yeah. Anyways, now we're going to start to go on to the next step, which is to decrease every third. So what that basically means is we're going to do two single stitches and then we're going to do a decrease. So this one is going to be our first single stitch. So we're going to do another single stitch. So that's two single stitches. And now we're going to do a decrease. So we're going to grab the inside part of one loop and the back part of the next loop. Just make a stitch. And we're just going to keep doing that all the way around. So I'll show you again. So we're going to do two single stitches. So we're going to do one, two. And then we're going to do a decrease. So we're going to grab the inside part of one loop, back part of the next loop, and we just make a stitch. And we just keep doing this all the way around. So we'll do one. And then two. Oh my god. Still in a loop. Go with the loop. And then we'll do a decrease. And then we should be at the C clip. So you're just going to make a stitch on the band that has a C clip on it. And you'll move it up. 
So if you count around now, you should be at nine loops. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And right now is when you're going to want to stuff him. So you're just going to get your stuffing and stuff him because after this, we're going to be closing it up. So I'm going to get my cotton balls. And we'll just stuff him. Eh. There we go. I may have put too much stuffing in one big clump, but it's fine. I always debate if I should stuff off camera or not, because it always takes me a second. But I assume you're stuffing along with me, so hopefully it takes you a second to stuff as well. Hopefully I have enough stuffing. I brought two cotton balls in like a little bit, but hopefully it's enough. Because if he needs more, I do not have more stuffing on my desk. Nah, he's good, I think. Yeah, it's a good amount of stuffing. And then once you finish stuffing him, you can just put your C-clip, your C-clip, your hook back in. And you're just going to want to make sure you're facing the right way. So to make sure you're facing the right way, you can see that all the loops are going like this. So I know my hook needs to go in this way. Like that. So now we're just going to decrease everything until it's closed. So every single stitch we do is going to be a decrease until we can't decrease anymore. So all we're going to do is we're just going to do decreases until we can't basically. So every stitch is a decrease. And you can take the C-clip out at this point if it's getting in the way. Mine's kind of getting in the way, so I'm just going to take it out and keep decreasing. And then once you have the very last decrease up on your hook, you're just going to pull a band through everything on your hook, push the back one over the front one, and pull tight. And then you'll just hide your tail. That. and then this part is done so now we just need to attach everything to make it look like a dog and I actually feel like attaching on this guy is pretty easy I know some of my other designs it's a little bit hard but this guy is fairly easy so the first thing we need to do is make this squiggle of either mustard or ketchup is what it's supposed to be I'm going to be doing mustard again today so you're just going to want to get whatever color you want for that like I said I'm getting yellow because I want to make it look like mustard I got way too much yellow. I did not need this many bands. <laughs> and usually what I'll do is I'll just decide what I want to be the front of my corn dog. So it's round, so it doesn't really matter what side. So I'm just going to start right here. Um, and you're going to just want to leave a little bit of space for the face. So we'll go in right... I'm debating if I should go down here or up here. I think I'm going to just go right here. So right about there. And we're just going to basically st stitch in the shape of a squiggle. I never really planned this out. Um, I just kind of do whatever I'm feeling. So I just did three single stitches across the top here. And now I'm going to start going down to make the next part of this, this sniggle. Sniggle. Squiggle. I can't speak. But basically we're just going to make a squiggle of mustard down the corn dog. And like I said, I don't really plan what I'm doing. I'm just doing however I feel the squiggle would look good. And you don't want to make it too wide. Usually about this wide is good. It's really hard to explain to you what I'm doing because I'm literally just basically stitching it however I feel would look good. But I'm noticing I'm kind of doing the same thing. So I kind of do um, the three like single stitches and then I'll come down one, make a stitch, 
and then I'll kind of turn the other way and then make three stitches going the other way. I'm, notice, I'm noticing I'm kind of consistently doing that, so I hope that helps you figure out how to make a squiggle. But honestly, if yours looks a little different, that's fine. It doesn't have to be exactly like mine. So like that. And once you get to the last spot, um, you're just going to pull a band through everything on your hook. Push the back one over the front one and pull tight. Like that. We'll hide our tail. Like that. Okay, I paused to get my um, my eyes and then my stick color. I'm using these. Um, so let me first show you... Well, I'm going to show you how to just finish putting the uh, eyes on the band just because... I don't want this guy to roll away. So you're just going to want to get your bead, a piece of string. You're going to put your bead on the string. And you're going to put your band on the string as well. And then you're just going to go fold over and go back through the bead. Uh, go back. Through the bead. And then you'll just slide it on. And you'll just do this for both your eyes. I already did it for one of mine, so you just have to do them for both. We'll set these aside for now, though, because we're not going to do that right now. What we're going to do next is the stick. So you're going to want to get whatever color you want for your stick. I'm using these, I don't know, they're silicone bands that are kind of peachy and I think they'll look okay. You can use whatever color. So, you're just going to come to the bottom of your corn dog, and you're going to come right in the middle. And you're just going to pull through two bands, put them both back on your hook. So for this guy, after I did the two bands, I did doubled, doubled bands. So basically you get two bands, you double them and you pull them through. But I don't know if that's going to work with these silicone ones because they're so tight. Ow. <laughs> like that. And you're going to want to chain up, um, let me count how many. So you're just going to chain up four double doubled bands. Um, if you're using silicone bands, I don't know if I recommend. You might just want to do doubled bands because they're so tight. Yeah, I think I'm just going to do doubled bands because these are um, so tight. But usually, if I wasn't using silicone bands, I would do doubled, doubled bands chained up four times. Um, it's only on the first one that I don't do them doubled. But because these are so tight and because they're silicone bands, I'm just going to... I'm just going to chain up about a couple times. I do think it looks nicer when they're doubled, but I do not have the energy for that. Hmm. I don't know if I like how that looks. Uh, let me fix it. Okay, sorry about that. I went to get white bands. I really was hoping those worked. But like I said, after you pull the two bands through the bottom, you're just going to chain up four doubled, doubled bands. Um, and don't use silicone is what I've learned because they're just not stretchy enough for this and when you double them, it just hurts. <laughs> but like I said, we're going to want to chain up four doubled, doubled bands. So you just get two bands, double them, pull them through, and chain them up. I really thought the silicone ones would work, but they did not. I mean, double doubled bands are tight as it is, it's just... Yeah. Okay, so once you have chained up four doubled, doubled bands, so after the first one, you're just going to pull a band through everything on your hook. Ah! Don't let go of everything. Oh, shoot. I gotta save it. This is not good. I'm sorry. I should pause. Let me pause. Okay, sorry. It's just because I nearly lost it, but you'll just slip knot. So you'll just put both ends on your hook. Back one over the front one and pull tight. And then you're just going to weave the tail into the stick. And it should hide fairly easily. So you just kind of weave it into the stick. Like 
And usually it doesn't even reach the bottom, so usually I'll just weave it in. And this is like the worst tail to hide, but it's the only way to do the stick, or the best way to do the stick. Okay, well that's fine. Like that, it has a stick. So basically what we did, in case anyone's confused, is we pulled two bands through on the bottom and then we just chained up four double double bands and then tied it off. Okay, so I think the thing we're going to do next is the arms just because they're really easy. I did not think the stick was going to give me that many problems, but it did. So what we're going to do is we're just going to wrap a band four times around our hook, so... That's two, and you grab both of them, wrap around again, four, and then you'll just pull a band through everything, and then you'll use this band to tie the hand into your corn dog. So I usually put the hands about right here, towards the top. I'll just leave it like that. I usually don't tuck the tails in until I'm happy with all, where all the hands are. So we just do this four times to make all of the little hands. that. So we're just wrapping a band four times around our hook and then basically just tying it into a corn dog. Like and I really don't tuck any of the tails in until the end so like till after we do the face just in case I want to move anything. And he has legs. So the very last thing we want to do is the face. So let me go get everything for that because I need more peach bands. Okay, I got everything. So the next thing we're going to be doing is just the face. So we'll do his muzzle and then his ears and then the nose. And then we'll pretty much be done. So we're going to make the muzzle next. I already made one. Um, I'll show you how to make it and then you're going to want to make another one. But... All we're going to do is we're basically going to be wrapping our cat band four times and then putting five stitches in it. So it's just like what we did at the start of the corn dog, but this time we're doing it just by itself, I guess. So like I said, we're going to wrap a band four times around our hook. And then we'll be putting five stitches into this cat band. So we'll pull a band through just the cat band. Both ends back on our hook. Push the back one over the front one. And then we're going to go back through the cat band, pull a band through just the cat band, both ends back on our hook, push the back one over the front one, and then push the loop from last time over as well. And we're just going to be putting, like I said, five stitches into the cat band, so that was two stitches, so we need to do three more. And if this is too hard for you because of how tight the cat band is, you can just do the cat band wrapped three times. I just think it looks nicer when it's wrapped four times. Um... But if it's really hard for you to do it and you can't do it, just do it with it wrapped three times. Um, oh, that's five. I thought I only did four, but no, that's five stitches. So once you're doing five, st once you finish doing five stitches in the cap band, um, we're just gonna go through the first loop, and you can count to make sure you have five. So I'll ch double check. So one, two, three, four, and five, and then we'll go back through the first loop, pull a band through it. And then we're going to use this band to tie it into our corn dog. So you're just going to want to come where you want it. Usually I put it right above where the squiggle is. So we'll come right here. And we'll just tie it in. And you're going to want to have to, you're probably going to have to tie it down a couple times. So you can just go through the loop and then go through part of your corn dog. And then just tie it in. Like that. And I don't know how many times you're going to have to tie it in. Sometimes I only have to do two. Sometimes I do three. 
Um, like I said, you want to make two of these. I already made the other one, so I'm just going to attach it now. So I'm just going to come right here and tie it in. And as you can tell, I'm still not hiding any of the tails in, just in case I need to move anything. <laughs> it's just finding um, the cat bands are always such a pain. I don't know if that's just me. It might just be me. I always hate when I have to go looking for the cat bands. I'm trying to figure out where to tie this one a second time. Where should I tie it? I guess we'll tie it right here. Hmm. I think that's okay. I think that's pretty good. Um, I do also kind of like to tie the two middle bits together. I think it just looks nicer when you tie this middle bit to kind of like this middle part. I think it just looks nicer when you do that. Because it kind of brings them a little closer together. I'll just hide the tails. I'm going to leave all the tails out still until I'm done with the face. Actually, I think I'm going to hide all the tails for the muzzle. So I'm going to pause. I'm going to hide all the tails just on the muzzle and the arms. Um, just so that way we don't get confused with where everything is. And then I'll come back and show you how to do the eyes, nose, and ears. Okay, so I hid all the tails in. So now it looks a lot cleaner. I'm pretty happy with where everything is. So now we're going to do the ears. And I usually put the ears at the top of the head so we're gonna come right here so I'm gonna go into this stitch right here and we're just gonna stitch three times going downward so this will be one two and then three so after you stitch three times where you want the ear you're just going to turn. So we're facing this way and we're going to turn so we face this way. We're going to do one single stitch. And then we're going to do an increase. So we're going to put two stitches in this one. And then we're going to do a single stitch in this weird bit. So this bit is not technically a loop. You see that? But we're going to do a stitch in it. So we'll just do a stitch in it. And then we're going to turn, and we're just going to do single stitches all the way until we reach the other end. So we'll just do single stitches all the way across. And then once you do your last single stitch on the last loop, you're just going to come into the same spot of where we did our last stitch or our first stitch or whatever and we're just going to pull a band through everything on our hook and tie off like that and then it, it does look like a little weird because but if you just push it to the front it should look like that and we're just going to do this same thing on the other side so I'll show you again in case you're confused and I need more peach bands do I have more? I do there we go. And don't worry, the, after the ears we're pretty much done because we just tie the eyes and nose in and that's super easy. I'm kind of starving. I don't know why I always decide to film around lunchtime, but I'm ready to eat. Like, I'm so hungry. <laughs> Which is surprising because I eat breakfast late, but I don't know. I'm hungry. So like I said, we're just going to do the same thing on this side. So I'm going to stitch in right here and then I'll just stitch down. So three stitches, so I'll do one probably here, here, and then there. So we'll do one, and then two, and then three. And then after this, we're just going to turn so we face the other way. We're going to do one single stitch, then we'll do an increase, and 
And then we'll do a single stitch in that weird bit that's not a loop, but we're going to do a stitch in it anyway, so... This one? It's basically the flipped over part of the first stitch, you can tell it is. But we're just going to go through that. Do a single stitch. And then we're going to turn and just do single stitches until we get to the to the end, basically. We're just going to do single stitches in all the loops. I don't know why my camera looks like it lags when I film sometimes. And it's not good because it comes in, out in the footage like that. I am looking into buying a camera to film tutorials in my videos because... You know, I wasn't going to do it at first, but I've kind of stuck with doing tutorials for a couple years now. So I really should look into getting a camera. I just don't know what camera to get. So, yeah. But I might get one soon just because it would really up the quality of my tutorials. And that's something I really need to do. But once you finish doing um, all the single stitches and all the loops, you're just going to come into the place where we made that first, or the stitch right there. And you're just going to pull band through everything on your hook. And tie it off. And you can just flip your ear over. And it should look like this. Now we're going to hide both the tails in. Yeah, I really need to get a new camera. <laughs> I basically just use my phone to film. And see, that's another thing I was debating. Because iPhones film pretty well. Like, the quality of an iPhone is really good. And would definitely be a step up to from where like I am with filming quality-wise. So I don't know if I should just get an iPhone. I have I use an Android phone. The thing is, if I got an iPhone, I wouldn't use it as my phone. I would probably just use it for YouTube because I really like the phone I have. So, yeah. Anyways, now we just need to tie the eyes in. So I'm going to do that. Have my eyeballs ready. And if you don't have a bead, you can just wrap a band four times around your hook and pull it through. And it'll work the same. But I'm going to come... Where should I put his eye? Hmm. You can come right here, maybe. Just tie the eye in. Yeah, that's a good spot. And we'll tie the eye. Where should we tie it? Hmm. I guess we'll tie it right here. We'll just tie it in. And then we'll just hide our tails in once again. You know, I thought there wasn't a lot of tail tucking on this guy, but after making him for the third time, we do have to hide a lot of tails. I just don't think it's that bad because he's kind of big. So it's easy to hide the tails in, you know. Because there are some designs when they're small and it's just like a pain to hide all the tails in. <laughs> okay. The very last thing we need to do is his nose. So we'll take a black band, wrap it four times around our hook. Pull the band through, and this is the same way you would do the eyes if you didn't have beads, but you'll just pull the band through. You'll come in between the muzzle, so we're going to want our nose right here, and you'll just tie it in, like that, and you'll just hide your um, tail in. And that's it. Um, you can give them cheeks if you want. I did give the both of them cheeks in whatever color their thing was. Like this one has red cheeks because he's supposed to have ketchup. And I gave this one yellow cheeks just because he has mustard. It didn't really make sense to give him red cheeks. So I'll give him some yellow ones as well. So I'll just pull a band through and then put the back one over the front one. And then pull it tight but not too tight. And hide the tail. Like that. Do this again on the other side. And we'll just hide the tail. Like that. And that is it for this design. I just realized I didn't give any of these guys tails. I felt like they didn't need them. I just liked how they look like this. Um, you could figure out how to give yours a tail if you feel like it really needs it. But I feel like this way it still kind of looks like a corn dog. And also a dog, so yeah. Um, if you make any of these, definitely share them with me. I would love to see how yours turn out. Um, you can tag me on Instagram. My Instagram is the same as here on YouTube, so it's Gingercell. And yeah.
I would love to see what you make. I hope your corn dog turned out okay. Um, these are really fun to make, like I said. And uh, yeah, I guess we're wrapping up the video. So subscribe if you want to see more tutorials from me. I always have more things coming. I'm hoping to do a shamrock soon for St. Patrick's Day. And the miraculous Tsum Tsum tutorials are the ones that are coming next. So subscribe if you want to see when any of that comes out. Um, I leave my Instagram, Etsy, all that in the description box in case you want to check me out anywhere else. Um, I usually post new designs on Instagram before you guys see them here, so if you want to follow me on Instagram to see what's coming up, that's a good idea. But yeah, I think that is it for this video. I hope your corn dog turned out okay. Like I said, show them to me. I want to see how yours look. And yeah, I think that is it for this video, so I will see you in the next one. Bye.